This Week in Startups is brought to you by Squarespace. Turn your idea into a new website. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, use offer code TWIST to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Our crowd helps you invest early in pre-IPO companies alongside professional VCs. If you're interested in investing, you can join our crowd for free at OURCROWD.com slash twist. And Vanta. Compliance and security shouldn't be a deal breaker for startups to win new business. Vanta makes it easy for companies to get a SOC 2 report fast. Twist listeners can get $1,000 off for a limited time at vanta.com slash twist. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of This Week in Startups. It's our crossover episode with our friends at the Acquired Podcast. Ben Gilbert and David Rosenthal are with us again. They co-host Acquired.fm. Ben, of course, is the co-founder of Pioneer Square Labs, PSL uh, Ventures, and David Rosenthal is an independent angel investor startup advisor. Boys, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having us. us. I've actually uh, been, you've been browbeating me so much over the past year. I have a small, small little angel fund. uh, Now I'm I'm following in your footsteps. Nicely done. Is this a rolling fund, may I ask? No, it's not. It's a traditional fund. I thought about the rolling fund. Wait, I think we discussed this last time. Decided to start small. Okay. What is the uh, footprint of the fund? It's trying to go for 10 or 20 or five. What are you thinking? Micro? <laughs> micro, uh, micro, very micro. So, so a couple of million bucks. A couple of million bucks, yeah. Perfect. And so then you want to try to do 30 investments of 25, 50K, 100K, something in that range? Yeah, like, uh, yeah, 100K ish. 30, and you got to hit 30 investments. Is that the portfolio concept? Eh, 20 to 40 is the plan. 20 to 40 at 100K. Do it in a year, no reserves, see how it goes. Got it. So this is uh, like my first preschool, uh, you know, that toy series, my first recorder. Yeah, my that's first, exactly. We're calling this it is Kindergarten my first Ventures, fun. actually. What are you calling it? it the, the name is Kindergarten Ventures. Perfect. Uh, so, there you so go. So this is going to be your test. Now, the problem with a, such a small fund historically uh, is that you, uh, David, are not going to have a lot of fees to live off of. Even if you got 3% on $3 million, only 90K a year. Well, so how are you going to survive uh, in terms of fees? What are you thinking of fee structure? Here? <laughs> well, that's why it's a good thing that I have the acquired podcast with Ben. Got it. And uh, my partner in this in kindergarten, uh, Nat Manning, is the COO of a company called Kettle. So he's full time founder. Perfect. And so, yeah, this is for our At- deal flow on the side. Love it. This is uh, a great way to start off. You have other revenue sources. And as people know, uh, my first fund, I just did a 20% carry and no fees. It was yeah, 11%. And we're not fund. taking fees. It's A, because we didn't think it's right because we're both full time on other things. And oh, okay. B, because like, what, what are we going to do with the money? Anyway, anyway, but you should, any legal fees or accounting yeah. or something you can put against it, but you're not taking management fees. Um, and that's, I did that on my first one as well. And that fund had Calm and uh, Robinhood in it. So haven't heard Congratulations, them. by the way. I uh, I think that fund, yeah, it's it's it'll Pretty be big a big day for you yesterday. You know, in a way, except I don't plan on selling Robinhood shares for a decade. Personally, I will distribute the shares at some point to our LPs uh, when our lockups up. But I I don't see a case for me wanting to sell those shares when the company's only worth thirty billion. And it's got twenty two million active users i don't know how you y'all feel Tons about it so, so you're not like feeling a take the win you know lock it in heck no i mean think about the last double up the last the last two double ups in this game are so material oh this and is we so, preach about this on acquired all the freaking time this is the mistake the sequoia learned with their apple investment they yes. sold their apple investment for six million dollars total they own like 20 percent of the company makes no sense you want to ride your winners as we've been saying on the all-in podcast a bunch and it's time in market not timing the market i i i could see i know this sounds crazy to folks i could see some of this cohort that came out in the last you know group of uh decacorns coinbase (coughs) um you know because i do think crypto is going to be around for a while i could see coinbase airbnb uber doordash 
Uh, I could have seen Slack and certainly Robinhood. I could see all of those having a 10 to 20 X in them. Yeah. There's a great, well, this is perfect for the the theme, the, the meat of the episode in a little bit that we'll get into. But, yeah, it um, is actually. Uh, if you were to look at that cohort, Ben, I'll bring, oh, Ben, what do you think of David's plan? His little, I think uh, it's a great million dollar. plan. I mean, why it, is look, it a good plan? What advice do you have for him? Well, there's so much opportunity just in the like acquired Slack alone from people pinging him and like pinging both of us and being like, hey, do you? I'm starting to start up. What do you think? I really like the pod um, that, you know, it's it's a shame David hasn't had uh, firepower until now to take advantage of it. So mm. I love the strategy. Uh, I also love uh, I'm a I'm a proud investor uh, myself. Right. Ooh, and I asked David 2550 in there. Put a little uh, 2550. Maybe, maybe a little yeah. sub that I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> early on the journey. But uh, I asked David what commitments to make. W- what can you promise me? Like what's you know, what What kind of reporting are you going to send me and what's my portfolio instruction going to look like and portfolio construction going to look like and, you know, what what stage are you playing at? And he just laughed at me and he was like, yeah, I mean, I'll let you know when there's returns. So perfect. <laughs> I, so, I like the light lift that he's got going on. I, I like that as well. Now, to be an LP in a fund, I do think there's two things, you know, putting aside returns, we, we're going to be pretty sure David's going to get good returns. He's got great deal flow. He's established in the industry. Anybody who's a startup that wants to get 25, 50K would be, you know, wise to take his money. I think that's a no brainer. Uh, or, or even 100, but you're going to add a lot to it. But I do think thinking about when you're an LP in a fund, I'm in 20 funds or so, and I can't be in any more, but I am thinking about being in this one. <laughs> hmm. uh, and the way to, I would think about it is uh, are you going to let us know about the deals in real time as you do them in one of these micro funds? david yeah so the plan is yes we're still just getting up and running i've been thinking about uh setting up a private channel in the acquired slack for and just putting all kindergarten folks in their lps our founders I'm in. if you do it i'm doing if you're i'm in for that i'll put in 25 if you do if you do that <laughs> great 25 to get access to the slack channel well, I already have access to Slack. I'm a paying Jason, member of Acquired FM, but I'm thinking if you do a deal and you're putting 25 in, maybe that's just, you know, a good signal for me for a downstream syndicate investment. Great. D- great downstream great. or current, right? Like it could it, be current. Yeah, sure. But, you know, uh, I'm going to assume some of those rounds might be closing up quickly and maybe I don't get into them, but, you know. Well, so that's what I was thinking is like, yeah, things are going on. We post about it in the cycle. Like, hey, and then with the founders are in there and the RLPs are... Probably the largest group of LPs is is GPs, uh, other venture firms, uh, yeah. and then we've got other great that. folks in there. That yeah. was Mark Andreessen's plan. He was in our first fund. He was in my first fund, and he came out of nowhere and he's like, "Oh, I heard you're raising a fund." I was like, "What'd you hear that from?" He's like, "Ah, oh, you know, I'm Mark Andreessen," and he's like, "I'll put 50k in," and, <laughs> and then uh, uh, I kicked him out of the second fund or didn't invite him back because I invited him on the podcast, and he's like, uh, "Yeah, no, I'm not going to make it." And then his PR people were like, "Oh, well, you can have all these other people in the podcast," and I was like, "No, Mark should come." do a keynote at the event. And then Mark was like, do I have to be on your podcast <laughs> and come to your events and do keynotes in order to be in business with you? And I just wrote back one word. Yes. You're and like, you should want to be on my podcast. <laughs> well, I was just like, you know what, you're being a jerk for no reason. And you're on everybody else's podcast, you know, you're on Panda, which is trashing you constantly, oh. <laughs> you know, like, if you're on oh, panda.com or whatever, like, come on my podcast, it's like, it's you know, Ooh, I, I question for you. And by that the way, is where all that. the ac- that's where all the acrimony comes from with me and Mark. What is the origin of the twist name this week in startups? So I was on this week in tech with Leo Laporte. Yep, because that's what I was wondering. I I asked him, "Hey, can I use the name to do this week in startups?" Because I was only able to be on. You know, it was very hard to get a slot on this week in tech, and I would be on one out of every four or five episodes. And I was trying to be on more because I was trying to build my profile, but it was just like Kevin Rose was on and, you know, all these famous people were on at the time. And uh, I was like, hey, you know, I want to talk about startups more because it was this week in tech. It was more about the new iPhone and whatever. And uh, he was like, yeah, go for it. And then I started doing other this weekends and he, that kind of pissed him off a little bit, but we we worked it out. We hashed it out. Uh, nice. Because um, I was wondering, Ben and I were actually talking about this. Why? At this point. Shouldn't you just call this the Jason Calacana show? A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, at some point, but I, you know, I, I kind of like my legacy of this week in startups, but it, yeah, I'm doing it four days a week, five days a week. So it's kind of the Jason Calacana show. Um, 
I guess. Yeah, I'll take that under advisement. And, and it's where I go to get my, you know, direct drip of Jason. Because when I'm listening to All In, you know, your boys are kind of trashing you a little bit. They're taking the mic. They're running with it. They, they talk yeah. too long. And then you try and talk and someone's like, oh, pass the ball, pass the ball. Why can't you learn to pass the ball? So yes. it's nice to have the straight, the straight stuff. I, thank you for that. It's, uh, <laughs> it's actually made it easier now that I'm doing four or five days a week on this show. You know, when I'm doing an interview with somebody, I don't need to interject as much because people got their fill of Jason from when I do the news up front and then I do the interview on most episodes. And then on, then on all in, I'm just like, you know what? I'm just the point guard. I don't need to shoot. I'm just a pass first point guard. And if I get some reps in fine, but you know, it, you're going to get enough of me from that. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all in one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business, blog or publish content, promote your business, announce upcoming events or special projects, and sell products and services of all kinds and more. They also have powerful e commerce functionality. And everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box. So no matter what you're using, an iPad, a Surface, an iPhone, an Android phone, it doesn't matter. All these beautiful templates just work. And of course, it's got built-in SEO, free and secure hosting, and 24-7 award-winning customer support. Uh, we, we did Remote Demo Day in 2020. We were suffering through the pandemic. We were confused. How are these startups going to get funded? And I said, you know what? Throw up a Squarespace site. It's a project. Maybe it turns into a business. And boy, did it ever. We have now funded over uh, a dozen companies, over $14 million in funding. And this all from setting up a simple Squarespace website and tweeting it. So go to squarespace.com slash twist for a free trial. Squarespace.com slash twist for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, use the offer code twist and save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And congratulations for the team. Uh, going public by direct listing on May 19th. What an amazing journey it's been. Congratulations again. Okay, let's get back to this amazing episode. So what other advice do you have for David, Ben, when he mm. goes out on this road and tries to make these small bets? What should he do with his pro rata? Should he fight to get pro rata in deals? No. Should he do follow on? No, I don't think that. No, because well, look, fun, I, I, but I, I think uh getting pro rata in writing for a fund of that size seems a little bit silly to me i think having like handshake agreements with the founders where you stay really close with them you legitimately help the company during that round and then you're there when the next round comes together for if it's an investment out of this fund or an spv or whatever like it, it seems to make way more sense to me than um especially for checks of this size i am going to Somewhat agree, somewhat disagree. I agree that with the small checks, you're going to have a hard time in 2021 getting pro rata for a 25-50k check. Most of the time, that's going to happen at what, 250 in a seed round? You get pro rata, 250k, you'd be a major investor in a one or two million If you're lucky. Round. Like, yeah. Um, but I only do deals when I have pro rata. That's my, I would say 99 out of 100 now we have it. Very but you're, like you're it. You, a large, much larger fund and your initial check yeah. sizes are much larger, right? Bigger check sizes, yeah, yeah. And do you always actually get it? Like, even if it's in the docs, or does do people ask you to waive it at, an, at a future financing? I am of the. I tell everybody up front, the founders, we plan on taking it forever, um, and we plan on keeping our board seat forever if we own over five or ten percent of the company. Um, and yeah, but you're talking, you're doing this at a way different scale. This, um, yeah. You know what? I started at exactly your scale, so I would anticipate you would be doing it at my scale in five years. Um, then you should actually be preparing for that reality. Yep. And so, you know, if you do get 50 K into the next, you know, Robin hood, you, I think asking for the pro rata in a nice way, if they would give you a side letter with it is well worth your time. I would ask every time. And if you get it one out of three, uh, and the way I would signal it to in to the founders is I just want to be able to place a bigger bet down the road with my syndicate and my LPs. And we will pop up an SPV. So are, do you have an SPV strategy for this yet? Yep. David? Yep. Yeah. Explain it. I mean, that, that's the whole strategy. Is to what? Oh, is that for, for follow ons when, when it's a great follow on opportunity and the founder wants us in that we do it out of SPVs, not out of the fund. Fund's too small. Perfect. So that is the model I pioneered. Uh, hmm. And you should totally work on because, and where are you going to do those SPVs? Using Assure, using AngelList? AngelList. They're managing the fund. 
oh, they're managing the fund. What does that cost? Like a hundred grand to set up the fund? Uh, no, no upfront cost. It's uh, 1% or I think it's 1% or either 20 or 25k a year, whichever is smaller. Oh, that's a nice way to do it. So yeah. 1% or 25k, which in a $3 million fund would be basically the same thing. So for 10 years, 30k a year would be 300,000 if the fund yep. exists that long. If the fund exists Other that long. Other services are 100k, I think, and 10 do 10k a year. So it winds up being about the same. Yep. So it, was just, it was just easy. Do the SPVs yeah. come for free with that? Uh, I believe they do. Uh, wow. If you're doing individual SPVs, I think AngelList is what, like 8, 10K in SPV, but Basically now 10K in SPV and then 5K in wiring fees. Uh, Blue Sky fees is, you know, the potential on top of that. So I do think it's very interesting the way you're constructing it. Using AngelList is a great way to do it. Um, uh, yeah. Question for you. I would love actually your advice on a specific piece of it. Um, so I'm thinking we're, we're going to do a lot of seed and I've been doing most eh, probably half of what I've been doing over the past year, year and a half as an angel has been seed. Um, but you know, we have to, we have such great companies and folks on the pod and in the ecosystem. Uh, I've also been doing some A's, B's, C's, you know, just like small checks personally participating. Uh, I'm thinking we'll have some great opportunities for that for the fund too. Take what, do you, what do you do when you see stuff like that? Well, uh, we are doing increasingly series A's and series B's when we can get into them. Uh, and so we'll do a 50. Uh, we'll do a, a new investment in a 50 to $200 million round. It has happened. Uh, that's not our bread and butter, though. I think what I learned over my 10 year journey, which you're basically starting exactly where I started, um, which is you got a podcast, you got the audience, you got the brand. Uh, what I quickly realized was the amount of work it takes to put in 25 or 50k is the same amount of work as putting in 3 million. Yeah, uh, totally. and the amount of work you're going to put into it over time is going to be the same. So the quicker you can get to a larger dollar amount put in, and to 10 to 20% ownership in the winners, the better you're going to do. And when I went out with my second fund and my third fund to meet with the top, 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 top LPs in the world, literally the top endowments, I got meetings with every single one in their office with the top person, right? Because I got a good brand and I was able to, you know, get those intros, et cetera. The thing they obsessed over was my ownership percentage of me being a solo GP. And I told them like, well, I'm going to be a solo GP. So if you don't like that, you know, like, what if you get hit by a car? I'm like, the fun wraps up. That's it. And, you know, a lot of people passed. Most people passed, obviously. And they couldn't get their head around the solo GP thing. And I was like, that's fine. I don't need you. <laughs> what what year uh, was this? Uh, this would be 2016. Okay. Yeah, so really 2019 was, window. Yeah. yeah. Um, they, I was just a weird beast. They couldn't understand. And the then, pioneer, I think, is the right. Okay, language. sure. Yeah, you know, you, not for me to say, but <laughs> you know, in a way, like if you were, yeah, of course, like for me, like, you know, it's not for me to say, but sure. Yeah, <laughs> we'll course, say, we'll pioneer. say. No, it, that reminds me of the scene in... Uh, get him to the Greek, where they're like, calling Russell Brand's character. Um, like, you know, it's like, he's like, Yeah, you know, I sort of was going for with this African child music video and this theme album, like, kind of a Jesus, like an electric Jesus. I mean, it's not for me to say I'm Jesus, but <laughs> it's sort of, he basically compares himself to Jesus. Oh, he's so funny. Absolutely so no self awareness. Um, yeah, <laughs> as a rock star, it was pretty great. Um, but that was my big learning. And then they were like, what's your fault? All they wanted to know about was pro rata, follow yeah. on, et cetera. And I said, like, these are the large institutional LPs. And the reason they're asking that, Ben, is what? Why are they asking that question, Ben? Well, at the end of the day, this is not just a hits driven business. This is like a grand slam driven business. And so Correct. to the extent that you are in one of the few companies that will matter this decade, on an enduring global scale, it's about owning as much of those companies as you possibly can. 100% correct. They believe, they don't believe in spray and pray. They believe in hitting an outlier, the grand slam of grand slams and 10 xing on that. So that's how they make money is when they get into an Uber, WhatsApp, or whatever, or they're in a fund that gets into yeah. one of those with a meaningful percentage that actually moves the, and they're the dealing with so much capital you know you're the harvard endowment you got 50 billion under management like you need yeah. a lot 
to move the needle. Well, they, they, I think a lot of them are moving to a minimum of a $50 million check size uh, yeah. for funds. That's like they're mm -hmm. tiny. And I was doing a $44 million. I did a $44 million fund for a third fund. And then I realized like I don't really need them anymore because I can email my syndicate with 8,300 totally. members and have whatever 20, 30, $40 million fund popped up without doing any meetings. And then every time we do a syndicate deal, it does five times whatever the funds investment was. So we did 12 syndicate deals in June, we're on track to do 150 investments this year and put over 100 million to work. That's so even awesome. though I have a 44 million dollar fund, wow. I'm actually putting 100 million to work, which is sort of like being a GP with a 300 million now, dollar fund. Are you leading in all, most things that you're most doing? Things now, most yeah. things now. Leading yeah. or leading co-leading is probably the big yeah. thing see, now. That's the th that's the big question I have. We're going to have to see how things evolve. You know, I've been I was an institutional VC for over a decade. Mm -hmm. all i did was lead and it's been so nice not leading and following and so the strategy here is follow and we'll see how mm -hmm. that goes what you really want to do is hit one and then offer it to your l get a bigger allocation in all cases so you find one you love you're putting 50k in ask them if they would be okay with you syndicating to your top lps and friends uh another 250 and see what they say yeah uh, i did that for calm and exactly those numbers. It was the first deal on AngelList from a syndicate was Palm, and I was my first syndicate. And I put 50k in. The syndicate came in for three hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars. Uh -huh, three hundred seventy-eight thousand nice. dollars, but six percent of Calm, wow. which is a two billion plus return. It's a hundred twenty billion dollar position. It's the and biggest you kept return. Your pro rata. Uh, we did a little pro rata, um, but we actually were able to sell some in secondary twice uh, along that journey to book some wins. So we still have eighty percent of our shares. And it's the biggest return in the history of AngelList, although because AngelList and I don't have a good relationship anymore, they never <laughs> talk about that, I think. But I have the number one syndicate in the world, no longer on AngelList, and I have the number one return in the history of AngelList. No return comes anywhere close to calm. We're not saying you're Jesus, but you I'm know, not it's saying not Jesus, for, it's not, not for, for me to, to say, that. not for me to <laughs> say, but and you should get on the SPV train immediately and say, if I could come up with, you know, 20 more people who put in 20k, would you be up for that? And just start that now, because you're eventually going to get there. And you're and everybody's going to want you to put more money in. And you know, Dave and Rosenthal is a brand, they're going to want you to have more on the cap table. Just give the founders what they want, give your LPs what they want. And what what happens if you have a com and you put 50k in from your fund? Great, it goes 400 x, it becomes a $20 million position, whatever it is. Fantastic. But you could have put the other right, 328,000 right. in, right. and that goes 400x, and then you got another 100 million behind it in returns. Marron. Like, yeah, that's it's like, what you're going for here. We had uh, Ho Nam from Altos Ventures on for like a special episode mm -hmm. of Acquired, what, two months ago, David? And Ho yeah. has this perspective where uh, Altos is unique in this way. His comment is seed investing is the greatest discovery mechanism of all time. 100%. They really like it's not a secret, but really their strategy is actually they're a growth investor, but they only growth invest in their own fund and their their seed, you know, their fund, their early stage first check exists as a discovery mechanism to be able to better evaluate and better underwrite companies than the market could. So they know when to pile the huge dollars in, in an information advantage yep. way. A hundred percent. You cannot trade on insider information in public markets. And that's all we trade on in private, in private markets, markets, correct? Yep. Like literally everything is insider trading in a private market. It's so, and you know, the funny thing about the Alto story uh, and, and Ho and, and his partners is you would think like it's so smart and it's what we do. And you would think the institutional LP community would love it. It took them decades to get the institutional LP community comfortable with what they're doing. Yeah. To your point, you know, Jason, about like their... Even if something They're makes sense and yeah. it's logical, if it's different than the way things are classically done, it's very difficult to get people on board because it's it's new. It's it's unproven. Hmm. It might be better, but I do know the other thing works. Maybe not perfectly, but it works. So I'm going to keep doing the other thing. All around the world, tech companies are innovating and driving returns for investors. Well, our crowd analyzes tech companies across the global private market selects the ones with the greatest growth potential, and they bring them to you. From personalized medicine, to cybersecurity, to robotics, to quantum computing, and 
more. In state-of-the-art labs, startup garages, or anywhere in between, our crowd is identifying innovators so you can invest when growth potential is greatest. Early, just like me. Our crowd's accredited investors have already invested over $1 billion in growing tech companies, and many of their members have benefited from their 46 IPOs or exits. Now you can truly diversify your portfolio by investing early in innovative private companies at our crowd. Join the fastest growing venture capital investment community at ourcrowd.com slash twist. That's ourcrowd.com slash T-W-I-S-T to sign up for free. The more I watch what's happened, I realize I came to this realization the other day, because I was like, I spent so much time on these big LPs. And they don't appreciate me. They don't understand what I'm doing. They don't appreciate me. And then I've, you know, at the time I had whatever 800 people in my syndicate when I left AngelList, I wrote the book now it's at 8300. So it's 10 x. And I'm doing 12 deals a month. I, I mean, I'm doing more deals. Oh, you're like a little tiger I'm, global over here. Well, you know, what happens is we to exactly your point about Honam at uh, Altos, we have 65 of our 325 portfolio companies raising money right now. I literally had to take Emmy Award winning producer Jackie off of the accelerator. And I said, I know you want to do four more accelerator classes this year, do one, and then spend the rest of the time working with the 65 companies in our portfolio actively raising. Wow. 65. I mean, think about the scale of this, Ben. We, we would normally have a dozen companies. And you know what happens when your companies are raising, they need introductions. Oh, yeah, that's actually the biggest choke point for a firm is that when companies are go so okay, let me take a step back. VCs yeah. can be valuable in lots of ways. The way in which they are the most valuable is helping you raise your next round in the best way possible from the best investors with the best terms in the shortest time frame, or at least a time frame that is reasonable to help the company go back to building. 100%. And perfectly said. So when 65 of your companies are doing that concurrently, I don't know how you also do a podcast because oh my god, you are stretched thin. I mean, we literally had to say to everybody, tell us, you know, like fill out this form if you're raising essentially, and then I just had to put Jackie on it for 80% of her time to just I told her every day check in with 20 of the 65. Where's your fundraising wow. at? So you know, literally Monday check in with 1520 Tuesday check in with 1050. And let's keep this conversation going with them because some of them are going to fail and then some of them want us to lead. And in some cases, we want to lead. So yeah. this is I think, David, the tip I'll give you is we require a monthly update in our side letter. Uh, which I'm not going to give any there was a profile written about me and maybe some of the controversial terms in my side letter. I'm not going to give it any juice here because it was so poorly written. But you guys read it, I'm sure. And the, there were a couple of controversial things in there. One was that I require a monthly update. We require a monthly update. We've never sued a founder for not sending one. And we're happy to get four a year. What we do is we take the data, we put it into a spreadsheet. My team tells me, hey, J. Cal, these three companies triple doubled revenue yeah. in the last four months. What do you think? And I go to those companies and say, hey, would you like a million dollars? At a twenty million dollar valuation, we'll do a syndicate fund. We'll put in one hundred fifty k. We'll you know we syndicate eight fifty and we're done. Wow! And so mm. that is the big tip: is you have that information advantage. Give an unsolicited offer. You know where I got that yep. from? I I've been thinking about this. I I, I didn't realize I that, that you were in this. Who did point, I steal that from? Uh, well, Sequoia started that. Yes, with WhatsApp. Yep. The unsolicited offer uh, was the Sequoia Innovation. So, yep. you know, they that's did it my, three that's times my, with WhatsApp, I think. So here's the thing. I've, I think I've, WhatsApp was three additional fundraisings and nobody yeah. else was on the cap table, which means then Sequoia owned whatever percent, 30 percent. I don't know. It was insane. Which means they wound up owning if that was 10 percent. Was that did they get 15 percent of Facebook? We got to add Jim Getz to our, our pool here. Yeah, I we don't do. Yeah. Mm, yeah, Jim so, Getz is pretty great. So here's the thing I've learned from like, I've been thinking about this particular issue, because I've watched a few great venture firms do it recently in in uh, companies that we've been involved with um, at, at Pioneer Square Labs. And let's say, like, let's let's take a very negative view of it for a moment. You're like, mm. wow, these guys are just trying to come in at a cheap price and buy up their ownership before there's a competitive market for this equity. They're not quite giving them the next valuation price. You know, this is sharky. However, what you're actually doing is 
is pulling forward the uh, time that they could raise and basically saying, if you don't want to do the work, whatever, great, you can take my term sheet, like I'm happy because I get my ownership, you're happy because you get more money in the door. On the other hand, the worst case, quote unquote, worst case scenario is it gets shopped. And then suddenly there's a frenzy to fund this company that you're already a shareholder in. And you so win it's just, both ways. It's value created for you. It's value created for the company. It's a win-win. When I gave these offers, uh, I'll tell you the companies I gave them to. Fitbot, Lead IQ, Neighborly. Um, who else was in our portfolio that I gave them to? Anyway, I, those were a handful of them. All of them said, uh, of the four, the first four times I tried this, a grin, I did it with grin. Two of them said, okay, I'll take I'll the take money. It. Yep. Uh, immediately. The other two said, um, no, uh, it's too low. One said it's too low. One said I don't want to raise money. The one that said it's too low. I said, okay, great. Take it, shop it, shop say it. you have an internal yeah. offer and then come back yep. to me. She Which did four is, meetings. Honestly, like, if you want to get a great external round done these days, like that's you got to do that. You got to be a, like, such hey, a my insiders move. want more. I'm fighting them off. Exactly. So I did that. And it was only a million on 15. Um, and the founder came back and said, you know what, I did four or five meetings It was really annoying. And I don't want to change the governance of the company. And they were having a hard time getting to your number or slightly more than it. And you'll just do this. There's no paperwork, nothing really has to change in the government. I'm like, Nope, governance stays the same. We just give you a million dollars done. And there so three out of four took it. The fourth was Fitbod. They really are like a Pegasus. They, they're kind of like calm. They don't raise money. They just make money and the cash balance keeps building. And then eventually I got them to take 2 million and it was at a valuation <laughs> that was four times more than my original offer. Wow. But they, you know, they, they four X revenue. So or three X revenue and over some period of time. But that's the power move. I think David for you is to watch like a hawk yep. and have that system where you can then jump in, ask for a pro rata. Um, even you could ask for super pro rata, which is a little bit polarizing. But you could say, Hey, can I put 50k in now and get 250 in the next round or whatever? Now you you have to have the ammunition for that. Which you don't yeah, get. What's the, so you how do you manage the ammunition? Because you don't always, I mean, at this point, you've got a pretty good idea that your syndicate's going to be there for when you call on it. It's like, critically important that you have a track record with your syndicate and some predictability. Yeah. In the beginning, it was really difficult because I would tell founders, we'll do 200 and 600 would come in or 100 would come in. Right. And I just told them, like, listen, after I did the first couple, I was like, I have no idea what's going to come in. If you want to do this, it's a process. It takes six weeks, soup to nuts. And you know, that's obviously a liability now the amount of time it takes. So we've gotten that time down to three weeks or four weeks, but it's still a process, you have to write a deal memo, you have to circulate it. The good news now is, um, we just uh, did for a very high profile founder who gave me a million dollar allocation, we emailed the syndicate and said, this is super oversubscribed Sequoia's in the deal, this other person's in the deal. As a favor, they gave me a million dollar allocation. We're going to allow, I'm putting 250 in from the fund, 750 from the syndicate. It's going to be 150 people at 5,000. We had $6 million in demand coming <laughs> for that 750. <laughs> I think it's it was easy six, to follow, David, until you're getting uh, squeezed and, and out by these ridiculous. It was 600 of the 8,300 members asked for an allocation in the first 48 hours. I've never <laughs> seen anything like it. And, I love uh, it. Uh, many oh, of them were right. asking for 75k 50k and I just said you can request whatever you want, but it's going to be 150 people at 5k each. So that's the level I've gotten to now where yeah. I'm basically wow. hosting a lottery. Oh, God, that sounds stressful, though. See, this is the whole no, reason I kept this small. I mean, we, we could have raised 10 times the money, but I was like, I want, I don't want that no, in no. my life. You do. Trust me, you want to be able to <laughs> own 10%, 15% of a unicorn. Like I've never, I've only For owned sure. 5% of a unicorn, which was calm. I've I, to this date, I own five to 15% in many companies, 20% many companies that broke the 100 million barrier. And I'm starting to watch those now. That becomes like a totally different ball game because we own 15% in a company now that's worth 300. And I'm like, Oh, my God, that's $45 million position. You know, and the two biggest positions I ever had were Calm and Uber, and those both broke a hundred million. And I'm like, wait a second, this company's not worth anywhere near Calm or Uber's valuation, but we own so much of it, fifteen percent right. times three hundred. If they just get to a billion, I'm going to have a hundred fifty million dollar position in this one billion dollar company. It, it gets pretty exciting, you know. So there's, there's two ways to win. You can hit 
like literally the sniper shot, which is what your yeah. fund is designed to do, or, you know, you can get the shotgun or, you know, whatever you, you can, you can hit the 5% ownership. You got to get to 5% ownership in your winners, I think, to really move the ball forward. And you know, the winners. So why let other firms take it from you, David? I hear you. I hear you. And they want you. They don't want these other firms. They want David. Well, it's I, true. I, I mean, just David, feel in the you love. Could, you, you could, you could, because they have you as a small owner on the cap table if you're throwing in, you know, 50K in a, in a deal, but you're not like their board member. And mm. the next time that they're going to go raise a round and it's going to be a $10 million round, like, do they want to bring on some unknown or do they want you to step up and be the board mm. member? I don't know if you're interested in that, but... Um, <sighs> being a board member is a yes, lot of work david <laughs> david <laughs> how old are you david uh about to be 37 okay this is your prime earning window 37 to 57 this is when you can make bang put your head down say yes to <laughs> everything that's a great founder and do not worry about time or life work balance ben has no life he's never <laughs> had a life he is we put a money. lot of work into this podcast. I mean, you put no, a lot of work into your podcast. Well, no, I mean, here's the thing about your podcast. You know, when you have a top, you guys are top 10 tech podcasts consistently. When you're in the top 10 like that and you have the deal flow we have, you can offer something to your founders now too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not just a feeder system. That is the base level thinking of why everybody copied me as a blogger and as a I'm not saying I'm Jesus or anything, but you know, when I climbed up <laughs> the hill and they say? put me on the crucifix, yeah. you know, and they stabbed me and you know, whatever. I think, um, I think, you know, you're not Jesus. You're, you're, not you're, Jesus. you're, you're, you're Moses. You got Mo the tablets. I, I you're you're bringing the us tablets. the tablets said, here. here. Is what's right. But no, here's the thing. You, um, everybody thinks of it like a feeder system. That's like base level one thinking. And I understand that. What then you realize is then you get to do the victory lap with your founders. Uh, and the fact that you get to include them on the podcast have you had your investments on the podcast yet not yet but we talk about them okay on. so here's what you have to do because our format you know we do like the huge case no, studies i know that like, but you, you know, can always do an extra one you should just take two of your founders each do a special episode you have all four of them on and you each ask them a couple of questions how the business is going how you came to invest in the company it's editorial gold gold oh, for the audience great. we started doing with packy and mario we uh not going to say it wasn't inspired by all in not going to say it wasn't yeah uh we do once a month we do we call it the idea dinner where we all just get together and we talk our own Perfect. books it's great it's great and listen there's a lot of people copying the uh the all in format now of just you know four bros four you know sisters or four brothers <laughs> whatever just getting together and, and and hashing it up i think it's a great idea Hey, everybody, I thought I would bring Christina Cassiopo. I pronounced it correct. I'm hoping, Christina. You got it. Yep. All right. You're the founder of Vanta. Uh, people have been hearing your ads on the pod for the last year. And I thought it'd be fun to have you on and you to explain why you created Vanta and what SOC 2 is and why it's important people get it right. So let's start with what is SOC 2 for people who are just realizing they have to become SOC 2 compliant? For sure. So SOC 2 is at a high level, it's sort of a customer asking you to prove your security. So if you've heard about one, it probably comes, you're probably a B2B company and you're, you're doing sales and somebody asks you, hey, can I have your SOC 2 report? Or, you know, hey, can you go through security review? Or they usually don't phrase it like this, but hey, I'm going to put a bunch of data in your product and I want to know if you're actually going to be secure or leak it over the internet. So they ask you to get a SOC 2 report. We know it's 20,000, 50,000, maybe even 100,000. You know, if you roll your own, you do it manually. What does the average Vanta customer spend? Yeah, so the average Van Vanta customer spends less. So kind of 10,000 on up from there. But then even in, in terms of the cost savings, it's a ton of time savings. So rather than kind of giving up an engineer or two for a year, which is just super painful, no matter how large your company is, it cuts it down to can be 20, 40 hours on the low end. All right, fantastic. Well, thanks so much for coming on. And you've been very nice to our audience, giving them $1,000 off, uh, which is a really significant and generous offer. Go to vanta.com slash twist, V-A-N-T-A.com slash twist to get a thousand dollars off your sock too thanks christina appreciate it thank you so much it is interesting so like on a meta level just to talk about all in for a second i've been trying to dissect it um in terms of like why it's working so well and obviously your personalities are are, are fantastic you all have inside and 
not SEC inside, but like, you know, insider inside knowledge. Inside baseball. Inside of, baseball. Yeah, inside yeah. baseball of a, of a lot anecdotes. of really interesting yeah. dynamics going uh, on. Oh, that, that, the, the, the poker story yesterday. <laughs> wait, wait, <laughs> yeah, wait. That was fun. But, but here's a thing that like you guys overcame, which is typically four voices is too many on a podcast, especially four male voices, because the audience uh, typically gets confused. Each of you already had your own persona. So in creating this super group, it, it became something different. And in the format that you do, you've done it at such a fast pace where it's like, it's aggressive. It's like, it's moving at a quick clip. There's like, everyone's giving each other shit that like, you're absorbing knowledge that you can't get anywhere else because it's a very unique set of knowledge that you each possess, but you're having so much fun yes. along the way that I think it's I, the, the number of people who could adopt that format successfully is very low. I think that's right. Here's the thing I always tell people because I was getting recruited during that Shark Tank era to be on a lot of the shows, like Planet of the Apps offered me to be on I declined on that one. I did a show with NBC. I did a pilot um, with the Weinstein company that didn't make it on air. Thank God. <laughs> that would have been really bad. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of those shows I was going to do the really the big problem they had was credibility if you did an xy matrix on really there's like three vectors your credibility your ability to entertain and speak publicly uh, and then your desire to do so and if you take those three vectors and you look at you know chamath he is highly credible he's got that success um he's really good at speaking publicly and he wants to do it because yeah. he said to me, the origin of all in was, hey, I want to do a podcast with you. Um, and then you go to the next, the next, the next. You know, Sachs, great public speaker, very credible and wants to be on. Then you have Friedberg, who is very successful, um, kind of wants to be on, but I had to push him a little bit. And then in terms of public speaking, I also had to push him a little bit and coach him to but speak he bring, more. He brings a lot of magic to the pod. Absolutely. I mean, the episode we did without him this week, I was almost going to throw it away. I mean, it was good, but not great. I, yeah. in my mind, without him. And I think that any of the three of us on, it's good, not great. But I think you're exactly right. Then you look at somebody like the Professor Cole takes, <laughs> you know, he's not credible. <laughs> no. He's not credible. He wants to be on TV. Um, you know, and um, not a reluctant he hero, uh, and, uh, and, well, and he can uh, speak, and he and he can entertain or speak. I guess it's cringeworthy entertainment. Obviously, yeah. you know, pretty sexist and misogynistic and gross, Just and, wrong too. <laughs> and but no, but you—that's what I mean by credibility. So you, a lot of the TV shows are like we don't care that Prof G is wrong. He's taking his uh, shirt off. He's entertaining. He talks about his ED. You know, but the thing I don't like about him is then him saying Sheryl Sandberg only has her job because she's a pretty face and that misogynistic kind of stuff, which I think is, I, you know, he's terrible at predictions, but you can be entertaining and terrible. Um, and that I think that's what I learned about media because all those TV shows would put people on who had no credibility, but really were loud voices. Um, and, and that was the problem. You know, they, they were putting on all these celebrities on Planet of the Apps. And I'm right, like, so so on the on the tablets here, I got etch etch the last piece in the in the tablet for me. Uh, yeah, how do you think about your JCal portfolio allocation? You said you know, like you're you're still you're also in the prime of your earning careers. You got your head down. Fifty. Yeah, 50. Uh, the media yep. activities, the investing activities. Yeah. So the media I do because I love. Um, and it literally is no effort for me to sit here and talk to you or to host all in. Obviously, that's like a that's my superpower. Where it's Stanford also a real decides. business for you, right? Well, yeah, I mean, I think all I think right now this week in startups is doing 3 million a year in revenue and sold out four days a week and you'll be sold out five days a week soon. Um, and we sell it out every year. So it's, you know, it's sold out for seven uh, years in a row. Um, and we, so every year it sells out, we add more. So it, it's great. Um, and it pays for the team. Um, but for me, I just love doing it. You know, like this time with you guys, I'm writing down notes, and it will give me inspiration for things in my day job. And then in terms of investing, um, right now, my goal is to get to to get the syndicate to, you know, over 10,000 members was always the goal, and to do 100 deals a year, and we already surpassed that. So now I'm setting a goal of 200 deals a year, and 20,000 members, um, and to be able to put 250 million to work a year. 
which I'm going to do it for 10 more years would mean I would put $2.5 billion to work with a syndicate as a solo GP. Ooh. There's never been a solo GP who's put $2.5 billion to work. And so for people who are like, ah, he's the dumbest guy on the all in podcast, that is that is, I'm afraid, correct. <laughs> and actually, Jason, I mean, you if, if you just competition, if you think about any venture firm per GP, if you divide total AUM Assets under managed by five by 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 number of GPs, yeah, probably on average five, has there ever been that much capital put together at that pace under one GP? No, I don't think so. I'm trying to think. Maybe Chamath would be actually the example of somebody who's putting yeah. that much to work the as a solo GP. Or how many, how many GPs does the Vision Fund have? I don't know. That, that would question. be a lot. A lot. Yeah, dozens, I would guess. A dozen, I guess. Something. Who knows? The uh, Founders know, so, Fund probably hits that. Mm, they probably have six partners at a given point in time. Yeah, five or six. And they're, they're deploying dollars. a lot of capital. Yeah, so if they have a billion, two billion dollars, six, probably 150 per fund per person, they raise a fun new fund every 24 months, 36 months. I know, think their over funds 10 are bigger years. than that. Okay, even if we, so let's say 200 million per partner and you do five funds a decade. That's a billion dollars deployed per partner. I think that's possible, actually. Um, so it's anyway, not that's two and it. a half billion, but you know. Whatever. I mean, I, I think I could sustain it and enjoy it it just people have to get used to the fact that i am not the only person at the fund which people are starting to get used to like so when i go on vacation this time i literally told the people who are in the middle of raising jackie will manage the raise with you uh and heidi and whoever over the next whatever two weeks when i'm on vacation and you know i can jump in if you need me but oh now now we're into an area that i'm extremely passionate about is uh leverage on time so what are mm -hmm. what are the areas where you're like oh this is great like i can figure out a way to really scale this and get more leverage and have great people work with the company or work with the media and what are the things where you're like this actually is a core json activity that i cannot outsource um that's a great question i think when a founder is at a crossroads um where something is going really badly like the company's imploding or the company's getting bought or they have a founder crisis with their co-founder, that's when you got to call in the fixer. There's no substitute for me coming in and, you know, guiding them through that storm. So I would mm -hmm. say, you know, the storms, you know, a, a mini storm, no problem. But again, you know, we're talking about serious, you know, the, the boats flipped and, you know, the <laughs> you got passengers in the water. Yeah, you're going to need me to get on the helicopter, and get out there and coast guard it, whatever. Um, the thing I've done in terms of leverage, which, you know, I think, is something people I discovered accidentally was I started doing like an office hours type thing. And then I made it uh, open to more and more people and then having a slack. So I do uh, a thing where and I just got off it before this call, which is why I was 10 minutes late. Sorry. Um, I have had about 10 founders on two founders pitched me their three year model. So they said, here's our three year model. Here's what we're thinking our three year plan. Yep. So I realized because Doug Leone told me, you know, Jason, hope is not a plan. I would rather you have a plan for the company. And it just literally burned into my brain. Like Doug Leone is like super mensch. He speaks, you listen. Yeah. I mean, Doug Leone has my phone number and he calls me sometime. And, you know, I see Doug Leone comes on my phone. I literally, my heart rate goes whoop. I'm like, holy <laughs> oh, mine shit. Would too. And I, that doesn't happen with anybody anymore. And I... I know he's so know, great, but he, he, uh, he's got a propensity to just call people on the phone and have a two minute conversation with you. And this has happened, you know, 20 times in my life. He more or less like, cold called uh, the CEO, of one of my angel investments on a Sunday a year ago. This is his power around. move. This, like yeah, he just calls totally, and you're just like, you're just hi, it's Doug Leone from Sequoia. And you're like, hi, Doug, you know, and sometimes it's something completely random. And sometimes it's something completely life changing where he's like, oh, this LP would like to meet you. And. Would you be open to that? And I'm like, uh, yes, Mr. Leone. Anyway, he, when he told me that, then I started doing this with my companies. And, you know, if you are going through the three year plan and eight other people are listening, nine other people are listening, and then you say, hey, what do you, what does the other nine founders think? So those kind of group settings mm -hmm. where I am not the only person, but I'm leading the discussion Socratically and asking yep. the probing questions, man, is that a game changer for founders and for me, you know? So that that's how I scale myself. Uh, and I'm going to continue to do those kind of events. And then, you I know, like if I'm that. doing four days a week, I told my team, give me the list of the highest revenue companies in our portfolio that haven't been on the podcast. <coughs> and lead IQ Fitbod and grin, I just did dedicated episodes with those three companies in the last week or two. And I'm just going down the portfolio. And that's how I'm going to do it from now on when the companies hit 10 million, five to 10 million in revenue. 
I'm going to join the boards when they're under that amount. I'm going to have the team, you know, be board observers basically uh, on those. And so that's Ooh, my that's current a, plan. That's another Honam. Uh, it's very similar to what he does, where he says uh, once you hit a $10 million run rate, even if you're one of my uh, partner's investments, now you have my attention. And now I start evaluating to figure out if we should be the growth investor in this company. Perfect. I mean, I think it makes total sense. There's like a, there's a clear benchmark of, of where to get to. Um, 17 managing partners and partners, not included Moss and the CEO of SoftBank's investment team, according to our uh, quick research, Vision Fund has 10 managing partners, not including Masa. So yeah, it makes sense. Um, you know, oh, that's yeah. the, so, the, so, the, so on a per partner basis, yeah, you would be deploying more. I think so. Yeah. I mean, also, I think the syndicate is turning into more of a platform than, you know, vis a vis Republic, you know, as opposed to a single person syndicate. So we did two deals this past year, that were consensus deals. So we started this remote demo day, and I'm interested in your feedback on this, where we said, Hey, here's seven companies, which ones do you want to invest in when they broke 250 or 500? I think we just said, Hey, we'll do the diligence and we'll syndicate it. It's not necessarily Jason's deal. Mm -hmm. The syndicate voted collectively. Mm -hmm. So that's something I've got sloshing Ooh. around in my brain is, Hey, if the syndicate wants to invest in this company, and 100 members want to put in 10k each, and it's a million dollars, who am I to stay in their way, we could just process it for them and take the carry, do the diligence and manage the investment for them. So tell so, me more about uh, it, uh, what it means to for the syndicate to vote. Is it simple majority? Because remember, we're in a, a, I would do a it non-consensus based on, driven industry. Well, if 100 people out of 8300 wanted to put skin in the game of 500k or more, it's such a small bet. And it's such a small amount per person, I think you can be pretty, um, liberal promiscuous i don't know what the word here yep. is um you can be pretty uh, aggressive i think aggressive is probably the best word mm -hmm. if it was five million you really do want to have somebody who's the lead right so i think when you're making these 250 500k bets and it's 100 people at 2500 dollars or 5000 if you look at it like an experiment yep it's almost like a kickstarter you know kind of like a small bet so the 25k bet can i give you some bet. advice jason yeah, like please, what i would do please. so yeah, yeah i think you need to I think you need to knight some people within the syndicate to be smart money, to Love basically it. say you are signal mm, creators, because Ooh. otherwise, Ooh. I mean, you have literally written the book on how to become an angel investor. So you're going to sure. attract every doctor and lawyer out there eventually. And so yeah. you got to make sure but that some of them are going to be really good angel investors. And so it's just starting can, to but the vast majority of them promote them up. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. So you where's need, your fund? You, at, ben? I love this idea, by the way, deputizing people. I've also been thinking about the scout programs. Um, who's the guy who did the indie VC thing that failed and he did the whole oh, Bryce. Uh, God, Bryce. that was a good idea. I'm it was so a great idea. That that I mean, Bryce is, I was a little critical of Bryce because with the indie idea, I was like, this is stupid. Like, why would you give founders back their money? Talk about putting a stake in the ground, the burning unicorn head. I loved it. I think it was good. I, I was like, this is dumb because you basically are going against the, the, the basic concept of venture capital, which is you're defined by your outliers, and you're saying you don't want outliers. I was like, thank you. I will send you all the people we say no to. And can you please send me the unicorns? Uh, he didn't appreciate <laughs> that. A and, and I invited him on the pod a couple of times. He, he doesn't like me. Uh, with good reason. I, I was super critical. But he did get something very right with the scout program, which was he opened it up to anybody. He had an incredibly diverse set. So he took Sequoia's like, you know, doing the management teams at the companies they invested in and you know people in their orbit and he just said hey i'm opening this wide open and then he offered them a five thousand dollar cash payment if they made the investment as opposed mm. to carry that could come down the road <laughs> and i was oh, like that's brilliant that's brilliant just cash so if you were some 25 year old you're plugged it, it, in you're relentless that's a lot to you it does create a signal Word. though to get a deal across the line like it, it does create a strong incentive for you well, they, to no but they just scout the deal it's up to then bryce oh, or me yeah. or you or david yeah. Yeah. to then shepherd the deal they're just giving it to you they're putting it on your plate saying huh. i found this company you know it's it's going to be trading for free with you know for millennials <laughs> and an app you know the end and so i'm i'm going to steal that idea from bryce i think that's actually a that's one. a really good idea because it's asymmetric like to to a fund 
your $44 million fund, who gives you a 5k, whatever that means. 5K, nothing. Great. Well, I was thinking but of doing 5k to them it means a lot. I was thinking of doing let me see if you like this idea 10k zero carry 5k 5% of our carry. Hmm. So one of 20 points, or zero cash and two points of carry 10% of our carry just for scouting yeah. it and filling out like a basic deal memo feels like and then they wouldn't be officially scouts i got to come up with another name for it where they just are they they're like um uh affiliates. Moritz talks about this uh they they're your radar network the radar network they're just affiliates like they're just yeah. saying hey here it is but i'm not going to be on the board i'm not going to shepherd the company i don't even need to you know yeah i don't even need to um be an official scout so th that's my fear is i don't want people running around i had somebody who heard that we because we do a right. we do a carry their show. twitter bio becomes jason calacanis personal I, I, scout no, literally that's what happened <laughs> somebody literally did that they said they were scouting for me and i was like who told them is okay and one person on my team was like well i told them we had a carry share but i didn't tell them they were scout um but they use scout like in a lower term and this person literally put their linkedin scout for jason calacanis and then somebody's <laughs> like oh i met with your, wait, I met with your person i was like i was like hey jackie ashley did this person work for us they're like, no, I'm like, does anybody know anything about this? People started searching their emails. And they're like, Oh, we found it. Our bad. Pretty crazy. Amazing. When you think about it. All right, well, we had a really great idea for this episode. And it wasn't fund formation and innovating and venture <laughs> capital. But here we are. Uh, and we were going to do our Mount Rushmore of venture capital, I'm gonna call an audible here and say, let's do this for the next episode. Um, and we great. will pick our Mount Rushmore of venture capitalists. And we should tee it up now. So let's tee this up for the next episode. Ooh, I like it. Okay. So we're going to tee it up. Mount Rushmore as a device means the top four of all time. You've seen this on sports shows where people say, here's my Mount Rushmore. It's LeBron. It's Jordan. Blank and blank. And then you have this great vibrant debate. We're going to do this for VCs. And we need to pick the criteria. Like, I think yeah, that's why it's good to separate this. into two episodes, because we could have a healthy debate here on like, just how would you decide who should go on Mount Rushmore? Right, because you one way would be historical returns, an obvious one. So yep. that would be through the LP lens. But that's yep. not the only lens, is it, Ben? Or no, David? you could also take the founder lens and say, if I could take a check from anyone, all other terms being equal, who was the greatest four people that I would want on my board? Right. So, and we could even say, is think, it today? Is it alive or too. dead? Ooh. Right, because you could say, hey, listen, you have somebody like Don Valentine, uh, who founded Sequoia, yep. and did Oracle Cisco, I mean, kind of hard to even Atari. Return. Yeah, I mean, how do you even like put Don Valentine in perspective here, you know, compared to Chamath or David right. Sachs. But you know, Don Valentine, rest in peace is not going to be able to be on your board today. So I guess you have to make some allotment here when you're doing your four of historical today and everything in between. I, I, th I think we should I think we should say all of them in their prime. Okay, in their prime. Okay, I think that's a, uh, that's a nice way to so put I'm it. starting a company in 1982. And you know that Got it. so if, if I'm taking Don Valentine, it's like the 80s Don Valentine. Got it. So if we're talking about Jordan, we're talking about Jordan is prime. We're not putting a 50 year old Jordan against a 36 year old LeBron. Yeah. No, no wizards here. Yeah, no wizards Jordan. We're saying yeah. Jordan <laughs> in the prime versus because some people are kind of retiring. And yep, yeah, yeah, that makes total sense. So I, I is, think they I think they're actually three though potential vectors uh, uh, vectors and we should do I think we should decide on one of them. One is the LP perspective. Yeah, Which just is, straight up return returns. driven. Yeah. One is the founder perspective that Ben said, which is who do, who do, it's a competitive round. I could have anybody who am I choosing? Most helpful. And I do want to add one caveat to this. It's not the most founder friendly VC. It is the VC who will help me create the biggest win for everyone. Yeah. Right, 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 right. They're going to, yes. So we're talking about 2007 Bill Gurley in his prime, yeah. you know, doing Uber and, you know, every other incredible company he did during that time got it right because okay. otherwise you could have someone who's just going to like roll over on every decision and be your you know have your proxy which is like that's that's not really what we're getting at here right yep okay so those are two and then i think the third potential lens okay, is okay. your 
you are starting a five person venture capital firm. You are one of the oh. four, one of the five GPs Ooh. who are the other four GPs you want. Wow, with you. that's a powerful lens. So you're saying I'm building my own fund from scratch. Yeah, that's it almost the best one. That's like building an all star team. Yeah, that's the best one, actually, because it takes everything into account. It takes the founder into account and it takes the LP. And I think you unlocked it, David. That's so a, this is basically thinking. I'm starting a five person venture firm. I'm one, David's one, Ben's one. <laughs> We're each starting a new venture firm, alpha, beta, delta, whatever. Uh, I don't know who wants to be the beta in this group uh, or the alpha. Uh, what are we starting like a sorority? <laughs> Something. I'm just coming up with generic <laughs> names. Come on, help me out here. Okay. We're starting oak, elm, and whatever. Pick another tree. Calicatus, <laughs> Gilbert, and Rosenthal. What do you like? <laughs> like Calicatus, yeah. Gilbert, and Rosenthal. It actually sounds like a great law firm. That's a great it does, law firm. Right? A bunch yeah. of immigrants. <laughs> <laughs> 1200 bucks an hour we're gonna need a retainer here um, but i like that we each pick who we would want in our new venture firm to build around i do like this one it because it does take the others into account wow. the question is do we care how these characters interplay with each other like can we pick well, some yeah, oil you and have water to think here? chemistry you do have to think yeah, chemistry yeah. how they work with mm, you yeah. how they work they gonna with stab you in the each back? other gonna, yeah. yeah no you i mean are you gonna have four alphas maybe they can't work together it's definitely something to think about um you know like hey listen keith raboy is a heck of a vc but w what are you about you're to not say? putting <laughs> keith raboy and chamath in the same firm <laughs> oh, i mean no, what the f happens if you have raboy and chamath in the same monday morning meeting and they're trying to decide on investing in a company and keith tells chamath he's an idiot and chamath tells keith he's an idiot and these oh. are two of the most successful guys that's like having oh, two, i would love that that's like having kobe kobe and lebron or kobe and jordan on the same team there's only one basketball chaos agent oh i love i i'm a and um you know the dungeons and dragons like when you're building your character yes. i'm chaotic good like that's I'm me chaotic, I, i'm chaotic evil yeah oh great so yeah. I, yeah, I would love chaos this but would be like build putting dennis rodman and uh who was the guy who would say ball don't lie rasheed wallace <laughs> <laughs> draymond green rodman <laughs> Isn't and who else there? is absolutely going to get a technical in the first five minutes of a game? Ooh. Steven Jackson. Oh no, Ron Artest. Oh, Went into Ron Artest. The oh, Here's oh, my team. Yes. This is my team. Ron Artest, <laughs> <laughs> Rasheed Wallace, Draymond Green, and, and who did? Dennis and Rodman. Rodman. Oh my God, me and those four guys <laughs> in an NBA team. And you're the point guard. Literally, the four of them are absolutely getting technicals and getting two of them are kicked out of the game. We're playing three versus five. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> but yeah, Steven Jackson is the only one who actually can, I think, he's the only guy who actually beat up a fan <laughs> in the history of the. <laughs> I mean, yeah, our test choked a fan, I think. Uh, no, wasn't that his, uh, the coach? Oh, yeah, you're talking about Spreewell. Oh, that's Spreewell. That yeah, was yeah, Spreewell. Yeah. Spreewell choked uh, PJ Carlissimo. PJ Carlissimo, yeah. But from what I understand, PJ Carlissimo said something. Uh, this is the inside story in the NBA that nobody knows. I don't know if this has ever come out, but I know people in the NBA. Let's just say PJ Carlissimo may have said something that was choke worthy Ooh, to better. a player. Yeah, yeah, that'll do it. I don't that? know that that's true, but uh, uh, the people I know in the NBA said, you know, that I'm, listen, I stand spray. I'm just leaving it at that. I sim for spray. Great. Well, it was uh, our test, right? Who changed his name to Meta World Peace? Absolutely. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all right. So let's give everybody a tease. <laughs> we're going to give them a tease. And and maybe this will be good because then people can tell us too if they feel like we're forgetting people that they would yes. want us to include in the in the discussion. All right. So I, here's what I think would be a good idea. We each do one pick today, but let's Ooh. read down the list. Just a scratch list here. Just a starting list. Okay. Don Valentine, obvious. Uh, ben, read the next one. John Doerr. That's a layup. Layup. David. Mike Moritz. That's an obvious one. Bill Gurley, obvious one. Peter Thiel. I mean, Facebook. Twilio, Palantir. Can I, we're going to go to the East Coast for this next one. Fred Wilson, representing I mean, New York on. City. Twitter, Tumblr. Coinbase. Ooh, oh, Coinbase. The question on this one is, are we talking Bond, Capital, or Kleiner Perkins, but Mary Meeker? And the question is, when when was she in her prime? Well, you know, she was not an investor and was yeah. an analyst, but she was a great analyst. She's only been doing venture for a decade? 
I think we can say we could we could get her during her Morgan Stanley days as a Ooh. VC. That would be a wild card because she eventually did move to VC. But if she had left in her prime, she was playing the wrong sport. You know, she should yeah. have been at a VC firm probably. W- was but she yeah. The- was she the lead analyst on Amazon for their IPO? Uh, I think that was Gurley. I think that was Gurley. So what, yeah. what, 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 what IPOs was she? Google? I mean, probably everything. Yeah. Probably Yahoo and all those kind of companies during that time. Um, Blue Mountain Arts. Jeff Blue Company. Mountain Arts. <laughs> Forgot about uh, okay. that. Okay. Uh, so then you got Jeff Jordan from Andreessen Horowitz. Uh, Which, Airbnb. Uh, I, I, so far... And David and I just finished our two-part Andreessen Horowitz uh, uh, back-to-back five-hour extravaganza on Acquired. Are they I 13 noticed, funds? Uh, uh, I know they're 18.8 billion under management. I it's think in terms of the numbered early stage funds, they're on either seven or eight right now. But then they've got bio, they've got crypto, they've got growth, they've got the yeah. cultural leadership, leadership fund. Mm. But Jason, I noticed here, I don't see Andreessen or Horowitz on here. I just see Jeff Jordan on this list. Whatever. I got beef with Andreessen and Horowitz. Uh, <laughs> they wouldn't come on the pod. They're PR people. Who's the woman who runs all their PR? Margaret. She's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. I Jeff, though. Oh, we we got to talk up Jeff for I a second. I can't sec. stand her. <laughs> I find so, her incredibly annoying. Jeff, Jeff had maybe. She's the maybe. one who jerked me around. They wanted me uh, to have all the partners on and, ha- and I had to talk to her constantly. No offense, but. You know, listen, I'm Jason Calacanis. I only talk to the PR person. I got Mark and Treason as my LP. And then you're putting me on your PR person to like beg for scraps and try to convince them. And then they're like, she tried to horse trade with me a whole bunch, you know, have this person on the pod and then maybe we'll have him. And I was just like, you know what? I'm out. Yeah, you know, it does I'm, sound I'm beyond like- this. Like, I- I'm done with you guys, like, and gals. It's enough. Like, I do don't want to so- negotiate. Do you ever send them deals or are you just done? No, done? 100% I do the opposite. And I told that to them. Well, the other thing that happened was I, this is the thing that really pissed me off. There was, I was moderately pissed off about them jerking me around about coming to a conference or coming on the podcast. Oh, are you going to talk about the Uber Series B? I I think we should take, I think we should do a diversion in a second. second Let me just say, so I'll just say that, that to me was like just super annoying and they were super annoying about it and it was disrespectful, I felt to me because I work really hard to put on these events and they're free for founders and you're showing up at everything else. And the second piece was then Margaret or Margaret or whatever her name is like jerking me around and trying to horse trade with me to get their other partners and their terrible books that nobody reads that they buy 10,000 copies of to put on the, you know, list. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm out. Uh, uh, but the thing that really got my goat was Mark was like, yeah, send us companies, send us companies. You know, this is when they had their first fund second come. I sent three companies, two of them, Mark gives the founders over Bates and switch the founders where Mark replied to the founders and said super nice things to the founders. The founders get excited. Those two founders flew in for meetings. Mark didn't show up for the meetings. Ooh. Junior partners, whatever show up. In both cases, they said the meeting was incredibly short. The founder, the partners were rude, di- were disinterested, and they felt like they had to take the meeting and couldn't end it fast enough. And that to me was that was it. I was like, you know what, if I'm gonna have this bad of an experience, and my founders gonna have this bad of experience. And I told Mark, I'm taking every company, that's a unicorn, I'm bringing the ball down court, I'm sending it to Sequoia to that's right, that'll really get them riled up. No, I did. And I was like, listen, Bill Gurley shows up for me on the podcast. Sarah Tavel comes on the podcast. Anybody I ask at benchmark, Sequoia comes on the podcast. So they come to the events. My God, some of them even sponsored the events when I was getting started, I needed help. And, and then Andreessen Horowitz was just persnickety with me. And then they treated the founders badly. And, I, and then I was like, you know what, I don't need to have you in my fund. You said it directly to me, Mark, that I do, you don't want to come to my events. And you don't want to have to be if you don't come to my events, or show up for me on the podcast. Uh, then you can't be in my fund. Yes, I just decided right at that moment that I don't need to have this level of like, sn- I mean, who's Mark Andreessen? Give me a break, you know, like, I'm sorry, like, you're not that important. Ben Horowitz is not that important. You're not as successful as Sequoia or Benchmark. Your returns are much lower than theirs. So <laughs> like, you're, you're the 15th. I mean, in terms of capital under management, they're incredible. In terms of performance, they're far behind everybody else, right? I mean, isn't that uh, what you learned? Well, we, your- well we, we did the math. No, they, they're, 
they're, they're still they're second good. tier in their returns. They uh, uh, that was the I'm knock on sure them for a that. long time, but they returned eleven billion dollars on Coinbase. And All right, we'll you see. Can't really okay. argue with that. The, the 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 base case that we came up with, Dave, is it okay if I spoil it yeah, a little bit? Go for it. Yeah, spoil it. Gets been working so, to sign up. So they've raised uh, almost nineteen billion in funds. Uh, okay. We really can only do analysis on the first like eight billion raised because the sure. rest is recent or bio or stuff that we weren't. Yeah, yeah you're at. in the bottom of the J curve. Yeah, Which makes sense. So of like stuff they could be liquid on, and we don't know if they've actually distributed, but on stuff they could. Th they've returned at least, and these are estimates, 25 billion from that eight with so the potential X. for like 10 to 20 more. Okay, so they'd be a 4x fund. That puts them in the top 20% of funds. Yeah, top top tier funds. With a lot, of, as we were talking about earlier, with just like a lot of dollars. Like, like, this is just X's from their top nice, 10. But like, I mean, if you're a 3x fund, that's fine. I mean, I returned on my and, first And again, I'm saying their absolute worst case scenario. These are the returns yeah. from their top 10 companies. I mean, it's still no Sequoia or Benchmark. Just on a IRR <laughs> basis is what I would say. <laughs> on IRR, yeah. yeah well, More I mean, if, you were, if you were an LP and you could put money into only one firm, Sequoia, Benchmark, or Andreessen, Ooh. you would do it in that order. It depends how much money I have to put to work. If it's a lot of money, I'm putting it to work in Sequoia. No. If it's a little money, I'm putting it, it to work it, in okay, Benchmark. Okay, let's pick 10 million or 100 million. Okay, yeah, so you're debating Sequoia versus Benchmark, right? Benchmark is smaller, like, Sequoia is bigger. Do we care you about would, multiples or do we care about cash? Okay, just let's play the LP game here for a second. <laughs> We're all LPs. Here's your choices in their prime. Sequoia, Benchmark, Fred Wilson, and Dreesen. Who's last? And we're assuming all of them are, are doing the same deal with me on carry. Same deal on carry in their prime. Se By Fred Wilson, you, you mean USB as a fund? USB or, or? as a fund, yes. You would, you would pick it in the order of what? We're talking about Benchmark Sequoia, Ooh. Fred Wilson, Union Square, right? Or just Union Square, and Andreessen Horowitz. And are we talking about today, or are we talking we all about know in their who's prime? last? Who we all know who's last on that <laughs> list for LPs. <laughs> Dead last on that list is Andreessen Horowitz. And we all it's know who's first. It's Sequoia. Yeah. So then we're debating two and three, correct? The number of times on our Andreessen episode that we use the. Um, if you're going to come at the king, you best not miss line about Sequoia. <laughs> yeah, they missed. But anyway, let's do it. Let's do it right now. You, you listen, you guys don't have to worry about your relationship with Andreessen because you did your show already. In all honesty, who do you pick as your number one? In, the, in each of the firm's primes. In their primes, you can be an LP. Oh, and, all right, you can well, be an the, LP. Here's rank the wild em. card is that uh, w w there's a reasonable chance I'd want to say Andreessen Horowitz today because I think their prime is the next 15 years. Okay, fine. W let's take it as in the last decade, who are you making your bet on? Like if Web three is a thing, yeah, they're if best crypto is a thing, then they're going to be the best. They're they are best positioned. Yeah, unfortunately, crypto is a total giant scam, and there's no <laughs> actual <laughs> use places out of NFT. So uh, that's I think it's actually going to blow up in their lap, and it's going to result in a ton of lawsuits. That's my best guess. I think they're all their crypto investments are going to be you know aside from Coinbase, which is a legit company operating. I think a lot of those projects are just never going to actually materialize that's my my gut i think it's going to be a i think it's going to be like what was the thing what was the big uh investment that kosla did uh and he just got demolished mm. ethanol was he oh the, yeah 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 he did all, all those ethanol all funds those, or whatever yeah, or yeah. you know at that time or the kleiner green stuff well who would be your, in, in that four what would be your one two three four if you could be an lp well let's just say it this way if you could be an lp and only two what are you picking I mean, the, the, whatever the 2007, eight, nine benchmark fund for sure. I mean, that mm. in, in their prime, mm. like that wasn't that fund a 12 X? You're going to go Sequoia and benchmark. I mean, that's basically it, I think. And Fred yeah. would be very close. I think and the Sequoia really fund with Airbnb and the like might have ended up being better. WhatsApp, YouTube, yeah, WhatsApp, Twitter. But, but yeah. Mm. Sequoia is definitely number one. All right, let's go down the rest of this list. <clears throat> wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm sorry. not trashing it. It's, it's, it's 25x gross. Benchmark's 2011 fund. Ooh. 25x cash on cash. And you're sitting here talking about injuries and Horowitz's 3x, 4x, best, worst case scenario. Like, that's that's the joke of all this is Andreessen and Horowitz spends all this time doing marketing themselves and markets out there creating clubhouse groups and their it's, own news site. And it's their own so books. funny, Jason, because before when Dave and I were like, what should we talk about on Jason's show today? I was thinking like, 
it'd be fun to kind of like equate what Jason is doing as like the pioneer to what Andreessen Horowitz is doing now, this combination media empire, venture yeah, fund, whatever. I mean, investor. I'm not, listen, I'm not sour that they're copying me. <laughs> I, t- I take it as flattery. You're Moses. You got the tablets and everybody's just reading I take it as flattery. What I do take offense to is that they didn't show up for me and they treated my founders poorly. <laughs> and then that also, is, then they're just, yeah. And I also think they blocked me from Clubhouse. Which, thank you for saving me money. <laughs> but I really wanted to be on that deal at the time. Oh, boy. <laughs> and I think they were like, eh. I think we talked about that on our first episode. They together. never invite me into any deals. They never show up for me and they treated my founders poorly. And then All I right. look at Sequoia. I look at those other firms. All right. We, I, I regret always ever me. bringing up Andrews Why did you Harlitz. trigger me? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Let's keep going down the list. Yes. So after yeah. Jeff Jordan, we've got. Neil Shen. Sequoia, China. Big Sequoia, time. China. You guys Monster. keep going. You guys read. Alfred Lin, Sequoia Early Stage Huge. US. Huge. Back to back, two days back to back IPOs with Instacart and DoorDash. Incredible. Airbnb and DoorDash. Yes. Yeah. It's like, uh, remember the, the Tom Amansky instructional videos on ESPN in the 90s? Back to back to back. National it's champions. Crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Then we got Bestie Chamath. Bestie C. Which, you know, his, his venture investments, you know, well, certainly good. I would argue. I think maybe you've got the inside info, info maybe, J. Cal. His non-venture investment's even better. His call on Amazon, his call on Bitcoin, his call on Tesla. Yeah. I think that's why he wanted to create a firm that was not limited to early stage venture. So, yeah, Yammer, Slack, Box, Virgin Galactic, all good. All great, uh, yeah. But all great. Uh, but, you know, this idea of a crossover fund where he can just... Yeah, put money into anything he thinks is going to go up. I think that's why, you know, when they talk about him blowing up social capital or rebooting it, I think it was very much like he was doing the traditional venture thing. And he said, like, you know what? I think there's something that I would enjoy more operating, yeah. which is a this is a box I that I don't get. want to fit myself into. I mean, what? do you guys think I could work at a big firm? Like, I, you think any of the big firms would like to have me as a partner? I mean, obviously, <laughs> it's. I mean, it's, some wouldn't. It's too hard once you've done your own thing to do Correct. it. Correct. It's just, it doesn't work. All right. Alien Lee, Cabo so, Ventures, pretty So good. on Shamath, by the way, I do want to say, like, today is his prime. So, like, if you're picking yes. Shamath to, to be a part of your, your five-man firm, that's, that's today, Shamath. Exactly. Alien Lee, Cowboy Ventures, great. Yep. Vinod Kosla. Fr- forerunner, amazing. Yep. Vinod Kosla of, obviously, Kosla. I mean, I think he was... The most successful venture investment ever with Juniper at one point in time. Yep. At, uh, at Kleiner. He, he was, it, it was Vinod and John Doerr at, at Kleiner. They were, they were just killing it. But I, that Juniper investment, Juniper Networks, from what I understand, was at the time like a sick hit, like a crazy. Let's, we'll try and pull some data for next time on, on that one. Oh, yeah. yeah that'll be good. Obviously, your boy, David Sachs, who, by the way, I also Killing think it. would be today. Like, I, th- I think that's part of the yes. magic also of All In is all of you are currently on it, your own rising stars. So it's not like you're pulling on anyone from, Although you know, their, David's their angel days. portfolio pre Oh, unreal. It's unreal. Oh, it's unreal. I unreal. Mean, he was, I mean, a lot of them were the Series Bs, though, uh, in addition to Angel. So keep that in mind. Like, St- I mean, still, Jason, you do the Series B in any of these just companies. Got done talking, we just got done talking about all that matters is getting into the of binary course. companies of, of our course. decade. I agree. I agree. I'm just saying it's not a competition or whatever, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, he's done pretty, ama- pretty amazing. Yeah. Keith or boy. Uh, Keith. Fellow who, PayPal who, Mafia. Sounds like Jason obviously is putting in there. Uh, along with Jamath and uh, let's see, Annie Lamont. And From Oak. Don't know her. She's yeah, lesser she's, known, but uh, co um, uh, co managing director, co founder of of Oak uh, cool. HCFT, which was Oak. But yeah, great great healthcare and fintech investor, Chris Saka, who I think okay. may have had the best multiple on a solo GP fund of all time. With his investments in in Twitter, uh, Twitter and Uber out of the same yeah. small fund. Yeah. I mean, that that he had Twitter, Uber, and Instagram in that fund. Oof. Yeah, Insane. That. And it was yeah. like a $3 million fund, right? It, it was an $8 million fund. I think he only deployed six or seven. <laughs> and I think it became worth a billion. So it was like a 100x <laughs> fund. <laughs> Which my first fund was 100x too. If you look at my scouts, 650,000 invested turned into 110 million. So. It's so weird. I don't see the name Jason Calacanis on no, here. No, no, because it was small dollars, you know? Like, it, it, if, it, if it had been <laughs> six million deployed, it would have hit that. 
But for no, the record, anybody... we told Nick we, we we wanted J. Cal on the list. No, but... <laughs> I don't think I would be on this list right now, to be totally honest. I think it's, you know, my best days are ahead of me. All right, you know? well, we got last in the original list, sticking in the angel investment category, the OG, the original yeah. Super yeah. Angel, yeah. Ron Conway. I mean, I think that makes sense. I don't know the numbers. From what I understand, he had such a small amount of Google, it actually wasn't material, but the Facebook was mm -hmm. material. I think that's the what you know, you, you never know with this, you know, back channel, but it was like, I think he had 10,000 in Google or something. So depending on how long you held it, you know, Still it wasn't a like 100k of, check in the angel round of Google. And then our uh, two or so, no, ben, yeah, so you had one addition before I, the show. I added Jim Breyer from Excel because I sure. think like Peter Thiel gets a lot of glory from that Facebook investment. Excel had probably the single best venture investment of all time. In there, yeah, I don't know there. what that resulted in today's dollars. I mean, that's the thing I'm thinking about with all these investments is I'm starting to think two decades now uh, in all my mm -hmm. investing 10, you know, six to 12 years as private companies, and then 10 to 20 years as public market companies is my current thinking of how to hold these. I mean, if you're going to end up with a Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, Google caliber company, never sell. I mean, you just can't. Yeah. Those companies are growing faster today than they have in the last decade. Absolutely. Briar led Facebook's 12.7 million at a $98 million valuation. So I guess Ooh. he owned 10%. Pretty wild. And it's worth a trillion now? Or what, what is Facebook? Yeah, I don't know. That's the thing I want to do some research on is what Excel's liquidation in from Facebook was, or at least their distribution. All right, I'm going to have lunch with Honam. Oh, While the best. you were talking about he him, I just the best did this happen publicly on twitter no i just uh, literally dm'd him on slid into twitter the while you guys mentioned him i was like i don't know this guy and i just wrote lunch question mark and he was like sure this is why jason's uh, been so checked out this episode he's just like been dming the whole time <laughs> no i'm not I checked out i'm engaged you, oh, what's this new theme music let's listen to your new thing oh wait, wait wait we got we got one more Spielberg. though that we added during oh. the episode we got jim gets we uh, how of course we forget right? um, yeah. got, gotta have yeah, him on there. Another oh yeah okay, do we want to have sh should we have young spielberg and mike taylor play out this episode we absolutely have to play out. all right listen oh. thanks for coming on the show boys and we will do in two weeks our venture investing uh mount rushmore building a new firm us plus four five person firm who do you put S on it super group ventures super group ventures when i'm back from my trip uh here we go taking us out young spielberg who got the truth bye bye who got the truth? Is it you? Is it you? Is it you? Who got the truth now? Is it you? Is it you? Is it you? Sit me down, say it straight. Another story on the way. Who got the truth now? Who got the truth? Everybody's talking. Nobody's listening. These days I feel lost, man. Lost in opinion. Everybody's fighting, nobody's winning, take me home, cause I don't know what's going on in the world I'm living. Everybody's break, break, breaking up the dinner, break, break, breaking up the dinner, oh, baby. break, break, breaking up the dinner. Through all this smoke I need to know, who got the truth? Is it you, is it you, is it you, who got the truth now? Huh. Is it you, is it you, is it you? Sit me down, say it straight Another story on the way Who got the truth now? Who got the truth? Not here for the cheat talk uh -huh. They flip-flop like a seesaw uh -huh. Not free under these laws uh -huh. Now the world see what we saw uh -huh. People wonder what to do now uh -huh. It took a body cam to get the truth out uh -huh. Hit the streets, time to move out Got so much to lose now Everybody's break, break, breaking up the dinner Break, break, breaking up the dinner oh, baby Break, break, breaking up the dinner Through all this smoke, I need to know Who got the truth? Is it you, is it you, is it you? Who got the truth now? Huh. Is it you, is it you, is it you? Sit me down, say it straight Another story on the